Hey sports fans, welcome back to another edition of Nonstop Football. Today, we take a look at the new look Jets and their newly acquired Hall of Fame QB. And only a season removed from his last league MVP honor, with Aaron Rodgers to the Jets, we take a look at what this could mean in the balance of power in the AFC East. And has the AFC East become the new super division in the league, or will it disappoint like the AFC West of last year? With the addition of Aaron Rodgers, the Jets have catapulted from up-and-coming to Super Bowl contenders. In the 2022 season, NFL fans saw what some might say was a down year for Aaron Rodgers. This was the first year since 2010 that he threw for double-digit picks, and the first year since 2017 where he didn't at least throw for 3,800 yards, and he was hurt in 2017. Being traded to the New York Jets has the NFL world in a frenzy. Some are ecstatic over the Hall of Famer joining Gang Green, like Mike Greenberg of Get Up, who is a conspicuous New York Jets fan. He did not hide his happiness when the trade was officially announced. I can see it in the fans, not just the Mike Greenbergs of the world, but everybody is excited. But there are others, like fourth round pick in the 1990 NFL Draft former Lions quarterback, Scott Mitchell. Mitchell believes celebrations in New York are a little premature, as he believes Aaron Rodgers will not get the Jets to the Super Bowl, and that they now have a 12% chance to win, which would probably be a pun on Aaron's jersey number in Green Bay. With the Jets, he's now back to the number 8, the number he wore in college. But with all due respect, Mr. Mitchell, anything is an upgrade from Zach Wilson, no? Wilson, with a man in his face, delivers incomplete on the near side. Still backing up, and finally just has to fling that one away. Wilson, step and throw, should have been picked up. Avoids the sack initially, throws it towards the side. The Jets have a young superstar in the making in Garrett Wilson. He broke 1,100 yards in his rookie season. And with better quarterback play, who knows where these numbers may have ballooned to. With a top five defense, something Rodgers hasn't had since 2010, which was the last time he won a Super Bowl, the Jets are primed to make a serious run. They may be a tough out for any team, but maybe he has one retreat too many away from his prime and won't be the same QB as he was in Green Bay. The AFC East is loaded with talented young guys and one old guy. Aaron Rodgers is the decorated champion of the division, but the most talented by far is Big Bad Josh Allen, or some might refer to him as Jesus Allen. He is the cream of the crop and for the last four years has taken claim as the best this division has to offer. And for most of the year, presumably the Buffalo Bills were considered top of the league. He runs the AFC East with almost no opposition. I mean, look at his record alone versus the Dolphins. Yeesh. Not pretty. Allen's numbers are ridiculous since his third year in the league. He always comes in as one of the tops on MVP voting. He's basically the Bills quarterback and running back. He's been the Bills leading rusher for the last two seasons and has made grown football players look like little boys. Through, there'd be nobody there, and then it's just one on one against one steps up. Jumps over the defenders. Here's Allen, first and ten. He's going to tuck it away. Ryan breaks a tackle, and the rookie into the end zone. Allen nearly flushed out. They're coming from every direction. Allen buying himself some time, fakes the throw, and he is. His godly performance have us questioning at times if he's even from this planet. This guy can throw a football 70 yards down the field with a flick of a wrist. But unlike Rodgers, he has had a top five defense in recent years. Number two last year to be exact. The last two years, the Bills have been crowned the favorite to win it all. Oh, it's going to throw on the run toward the end zone. Sights go long. That ball knocked out of the hands. The NFL probably. It's him and Burrow then. There's an interception, first of the game for Cincinnati, and this has been a great performance by the rookie. I mean, Tabor Britt's done it. And the Chiefs respond to it. Pressure from behind, 15. They protect him for a while, then they get to him. But fail to make it past the divisional round and haven't even played in a conference championship. Yeah, big crown kings of nothing. Next up is the supposed big fish in the sea, the Miami Dolphins. This team is quite the enigma, only because of the uncertainty of the health of the star quarterback, Tua Tungavailoa. 
Last season, before one game was played, many of NFL pundits believed that Tua Tungabailoa was going to hold back the potential the Miami Dolphins could have after acquiring star receiver Tyreek Hill to pair him with second-year star receiver Jalen Waddell. Much has been made about his lack of physical gifts that make Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, Lamar Jackson used to make them elite quarterbacks. Mobility, arm strength, stature. Compared to the aforementioned players, Tua was in serious lack, but it did not stop him from being mentioned in the top 5 MVP voting, finishing top 5 in QBR, one of the best down the field passers of the last year, and one of the most efficient passers. This can be observed by his EPA metrics, which is a measure of success, which defines the value of each play by the effect it has had on the offense's likelihood to score. But after proving all the naysayers wrong about his abilities on the field, his ability to remain on the field has, and may always be, an issue. You can't be considered Super Bowl contenders and have to worry about your quarterback and if he can help not falling like a baby every time he hits the ground. Jiu-Jitsu, yoga, whatever it is, just stop your neck from whipping back when you hit the ground. You're a grown man, you can control that. Sheesh. The Big Bad New England Patriots. Before Josh Allen and the Bills, there was Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. For 20 years, Tom Brady and Bill Belichick ran the AFC East and basically ran the NFL, putting together one of the greatest sports dynasties ever created. As far as franchise goes, the New England Patriots were to model after, putting together six Super Bowl championships, nine AFC championships, 19 division titles, plus arguably the greatest quarterback that ever lived, coupled with arguably the greatest coach that ever lived. But all good things must come to an end. After the departure of their Hall of Fame QB, the new look New England Patriots led by Mac Jones have not necessarily lived up to past success. Mac Jones had a stellar rookie season that made some think the transition from Brady would not be as bad as some thought, as he was started to be the next great quarterback of the New England Patriots. Year 2 saw a different Mac Jones, where his offensive coordinator was a former failed head coach for the Lions, Matt Patricia, whose background was found in defense and not offense helped with the regression of Mac Jones from year one to year two. Last year, contrary to years prior, saw a discombobulated New England offense that just couldn't get it together. Week after week, NFL saw Mac Jones struggle with an offense that didn't really have an identity. No running, no passing, just going out there and playing football, I guess. The New England Patriots have never recovered from their loss of Brady. They made the playoff once since his departure. A perennial Super Bowl contender has now found itself fluttering and not knowing what the future holds. There's been talks about Mac Jones being unhappy with the situation in New England. And we all know how Bill Belichick can get with his quarterbacks. Even the greatest of all time is expendable. With uncertainties and inconsistent plays, we don't even know if we could rank the New England Patriots in the same class as its other three counterparts in the division. All this to say, maybe the AFC East has become the best of the East, the best division in the NFL, or maybe, just maybe, it may be another disappointment, like last year's AFC West, who in the beginning of the season, most would have considered them to have four of the top 10 QBs, but by the end of the season, it was a completely different story. Yes, the Super Bowl championships came out of the AFC West, but so did a lot of poor play, to the Justin Herbert injuries with rib cartilage that hindered his development, and whatever the heck was going on in Vegas, the AFC West did not put on the show that we all anticipated at the beginning of the season. This division in football history. Yeah. Well, the Raiders stink on ice, the Broncos are unwatchable, yeah. the Chargers are startlingly average, and as usual, the Chiefs are good. This is the most disappointing division in the history of the National Football League. Yeah, I feel like I'm so yeah, the AFC East does look great, but it is a long season, and we don't know what's in store or how people are going to perform throughout the season. So with all that, take it with a grain of salt, guys. Tell us what you think. Is the AFC East the new beast in the NFL? Let us know in the comments. Year two saw a different Mac Jones, where his offensive coordinator was a former failed head coach for the Lions, Matt Patricia, whose background was found in defense and not offense, helped with the regression of Mac Jones from year one to year two. Last year, contrary to years prior, saw a discombobulated New England offense that just couldn't get it together. Week after week, NFL saw Mac Jones struggle with an offense that didn't really have an identity. No running, no passing, just going out there and playing football, I guess. The New England Patriots have never recovered from their loss of Brady. They made the playoff once since his departure. A perennial Super Bowl contender has now found itself fluttering and not knowing what the future holds. There's been talks about Mac Jones being unhappy with the situation in New England 
And we all know how Bill Belichick can get with his quarterbacks. Even the greatest of all time is expendable. With uncertainties and inconsistent plays, we don't even know if we could rank the New England Patriots in the same class as its other three counterparts in the division. All this to say, maybe the AFC East has become the best of the East, the best division in the NFL, or maybe, just maybe, it may be another disappointment, like last year's AFC West, who in the beginning of the season, most would have considered them to have four of the top 10 QBs, but by the end of the season, it was a completely different story. Yes, the Super Bowl championships came out of the AFC West, but so did a lot of poor play to the Justin Herbert injuries with rib cartilage that hindered his development, and whatever the heck was going on in Vegas, the AFC West did not put on the show that we all anticipated at the beginning of the season. This division in football history. Yeah. Well, the Raiders stink on ice, the Broncos are unwatchable, yeah. the Chargers are startlingly average, and as usual, the Chiefs are good. This is the most disappointing division in the history of the National Football League. Yeah, I feel like I'm gonna... So yeah, the AFC East does look great, but it is a long season and we don't know what's in store or how people are going to perform throughout the season so with all that take it with a grain of salt guys tell us what you think is the AFC East the new beast in the NFL let us know in the comments <laughs>